Michigan again. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, talking some Florida football. We've got uh, Jackie Franchuli on the line from Rivals uh, Platform for Florida Football Gators Territory. Jackie, how you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you doing, Mark? I'm doing just fine. Great to have you on the line here to talk some Florida football. And I really just don't understand this bowl system that's going to give us a Florida-Michigan game for the third time in 24 months, five times in bowl games since 2003, but now going back to 2016, January of 16, to conclude the 15 season, three times in 24 months. Um, this is more times than Florida's going to play some teams in the SEC in that span. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people didn't really want this. Honestly, if someone's covering on the beat, you know, it, it had some um, some storylines that we might have liked, for example, Jim McElwain was still on the coaching staff. Obviously, you know, Jim McElwain was a former Florida, uh, Florida coach. Uh, obviously he's not there anymore. He's left for a better job. Um, so, you know, now it's just, you know, rinse and repeat. Uh, we're back with Florida, Michigan, the same game that we had for the opener last year. Um, I guess one way you can look at it if you're a Florida fan is you really get to see how far this program has come under Dan Mullen, you know? Um, they were completely dismantled uh, when they played against each other uh, in Texas. So this is an opportunity to see how far Mullen has taken his team compared to that. This Because basically it's almost the same group as well for Michigan, apart from some guys who have graduated or Rashawn Gary, he's decided he's not playing for the bowl game since he's declared for the NFL draft. But you have this, some of the same talent on both sides of the ball. So it'll be interesting. I, I kind of like it that way. Um, just because you, you get to kind of say, okay, this is where the team was under Matt Wayne in the first game of the season in 2017. This is how they ended a season in 2018. Let's, and you can really see the numbers and say, how far have they come? Jackie, was there much talk on the Florida side of facing UCF? Because that's what the national audience wants. And I'm sure that's what uh, UCF fans want is that kind of, uh, unofficial Florida state championship game. A lot of, you know, I wouldn't, I would love to have seen that. I think a lot of the beat writers would like it. Obviously, stories write themselves if it was UCF in Florida. But honestly, when you were looking at how the teams are being ranked and all the possibilities of both scenarios, it, it looked less likely as it gone uh, further into, you know, the college playoff rankings. Um, so I think Florida fans weren't really expecting UCF in the last two weeks because they saw how everything was lining up and they were slated to be in the Peach Bowl. Um, so it, because UCF played in the Peach Bowl last year, they ought to, everyone in Florida kind of assumed they were going to go in the Fiesta Bowl, which is what, what happened. So Florida was not expecting UCF. I think UCF still held up hope that it was Florida. Um, I know there's a lot of conspiracy going around on, on Twitter and don't get me wrong. I'm not a fan of how college football playoff is ranking, which is a whole different conversation, <laughs> but it, 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 you know what? There's no conspiracy. This is how it works. You know, you see, I played in the Peach Bowl last year, so they're going to play in the Fiesta Bowl this year because the, the way the system works is they kind of float from one bowl to the other. If you're, um, if you're going to be UCF, that's an agreement that the bowl, uh, games kind of made so they were going to go to the Fiesta Bowl regardless um, in that position and you know when you look at geography they wouldn't want to put UCF and Florida all the way in Arizona both Florida teams um, so this this is just how it, it worked out but again it was not a conspiracy it was just you know the procedural how it goes again you might agree with it you might not agree with it but that's how it works I understand the process in play and what you just described in trying to avoid some of those scenarios that you just outlined. Uh, I just would think that maybe some of the some of the other factors could be taken into play and something could be worked out to get the right teams on the field and try to avoid these type of matchups that we've seen now three times in three years uh, with the regular season matchup. And then Michigan and LSU have never, never played. We're talking about two of the big brands in college football. They have never met in 150 years of college football, I would have liked to have seen that game as well. And then again, Florida and UCF. We've got uh, Jackie Franchuli on the line from Gators Territory. It's the rivals uh, site for Florida football. And uh, considering, okay, really the one downer this year was the Mizzou game, having the Tigers go in there and really clean 
out uh, the swamp in that particular weekend. Uh, Kentucky, obviously, that was a disappointment at the time, but the Cats turned out to be uh, quite a bit better than many anticipated. Uh, Georgia, of course, uh, the class of the division. Uh, was it a fulfilling season, do you think, for most of uh, the Gator fan base in assessing Dan Mullen's uh, first campaign back in Gainesville? Oh, no doubt about it. Um, I, I think if you had asked Florida fans, hey, you just last year, hey, you just had a 4-7 and seven season. Um, but don't worry, next year you're going to have a new head coach who's going to lead them to a 93 year, and you're going to play in a New York Bowl 6, a New York 6 Bowl. Um, I think everyone would have taken it. Um, they definitely have shown some progress on the field. They've shown improvement. Um, we can just look through their offensive numbers. Um, they're, they're a much better team. Um, they're, they have better chemistry. Um, I think the culture is changing around the team. Um, so I, I think Florida fans are just happy at the tra trajectory that they're seeing this team going on and seeing that this is just the first step because Dan Mullen still hasn't brought in the pieces that he wants for, you know, his offense and his defense, you know, last year was his first, uh, signing day. And, but, you know, when you come to his school, then you only have a month um, before early signing period, not even a month. He had 19 days um, when he got to Gainesville to kind of cement the class for early signing day period. And he really only had two two months, um, a month and a half, early January and February for the first week for National Signing Day. So, you know what, this is his first class that's going to be really him that he's researched and kind of said, this guy, these kids are who I want at Florida. So, um, you know what, it's, it, Florida fans are just excited that this, they're seeing some good things from their team and they know that Dan Mullen is bringing his class now. This is his first official class if you want to look at it that way. Yes, he had a class last year, but again, it, this is his first class that he's followed from the beginning to the end, you know? So, um, so yeah, Florida fans were, were definitely happy for this year. Yeah, as you mentioned, 9-3 and three is definitely on the bright side of the and positive side of that floor ceiling estimate that most people had for Florida football is maybe being 10 and two and six and six, uh, nine and three, something in that range being the, the, the good side of what possibly could have happened in 2018. And Dan Mullen, uh, passed most of the tests in regards to that first initial, um, inaugural season here at, uh, Gainesville talking of uh, Florida football with uh, Jackie Franchuli. You can catch her on rivals at the Gators territory. Jackie, we appreciate you stopping by setting things up for us and uh, maybe we can uh, flag it on one more time before uh, Florida heads uh, uh, out to play Michigan. Yeah, sure. I'll gladly come back. You know, maybe uh, we'll talk about all the, all the wins they had on Florida. I know my board would appreciate talking about wins rather than the losses next Wednesday. Absolutely. There we go. Thank you so much, Jackie. Thanks, Mark.